Hey guys, Skinboy3800 here once again, and I'm back here with Project Envy with the side panel open. Now today, we're going to test the GT720, but we're not going to test its gaming performance, because I'm sure there's already benchmarks for that someplace else. Now today, I have a specific scenario, just like I did with my Quadro videos, where you wanted to see if it could, it could still game. And the answer to that was, kind of, just don't do it at 4K. Uh, the answer here, we're going to find out uh, if you have an older system, just like Project Envy is built to be, with a 500 series and a first gen i7. And we're going to see if adding a second lower end graphics card can help improve render times so that, you know, you don't have to go out and buy a new $300, $400 graphics card. Instead, you can spend $35 and maybe see much better performance. So we're going to stick this MSI card in there. Uh, I know it's kind of going against the EVGA theme we have going here, but whatever. MSI card will be installed now. Okay, video card is installed, and I would like you to know that even though there's no side panel fan being on, uh, there is still a fan back there that, that you can't see, but in this duct here, there is a fan blowing fresh air onto the 570 and 720. I originally wanted to test this GT520 with this, but for some odd reason, uh, having the 520 in the bottom slot, the PCI slot, uh, did not, it did not want to boot. Let's see if this wants to boot now, after I turn on the switch. light is green and we get a beep yay it's working okay so it must be something wrong with either the card or some of the contacts on the board or something it's not right but yep our system now in safe mode resetting CPU slash memory and there's my setup or resetting uh, I continue. I'm not going to do any overclocking. Uh, all right. I am going to get the uh, drivers installed. Let it reboot a couple times to get it all set up. And I'll see you back when we have the file ready to be downscaled to 1080p. All right, we're back once again with NV in the side panel on so that it can get the best airflow. And I need to go and edit the CUDA cards configuration to, so that it will recognize the GT710. So OS, program files, Adobe, Premiere, and then CUDA. There we go, it should work now. Okay, it's gonna not want me to save it there because some administrator thing. So save it to the desktop. And then move it here. Move it in place, continue. All right, so now if we open it, it has the GT710 at the bottom. And now I will configure Adobe through the NVIDIA control panel to use both uh, CUDA cards for accelerating. So, 3D settings. Adobe Encore Premiere Pro, there we go. Triple buffering, power management mode, let's, it's already in prefer maximum performance, CUDA GPUs already has all, but just to be sure, I will select them both through the menu here, 
hit apply. And there we go, we can close that and open up Premiere. I don't know which one it is, so I guess I'll just start a new project. Um, I'll just call it 710 for GT710. Come on, there we go. Alright, I'll just do this format. It doesn't matter, it's going to change when I import the video anyways. So once again, this is the exact same uh, intro that I used for the last thing. We are going to downscale it to 1080p, and it is in 4K resolution. Change sequence settings, control M, control M again. Actually, I should show you as soon as, as it responds. There we go. Project settings. Come on. In general, we are using CUDA. So we're going to control M. It doesn't really matter what it's called. We matter what time it is. I'm going to do the exact same thing, converting it down to 1080p WMV, 30 frames. What I would like to do actually, set up on the right side over here, so we can see the GPU activity, and you can see it's actually already using a ton of memory there. And I wonder why, it's using 1.25 gigabytes just about, while the 570 is using about 800 megs. So I wonder what's going on there. So 1080p, 30 frames. I will set the camera down, and I'll set it down someplace, and I will hit start, or I will hit export in 3, 2, 1. Alright, that's going. I will get to you when it is almost done. Alright, I thought you would like to see this. It is using 100% of all the GPU memory it can get. And I did change the CPU radiator fans to balanced mode versus quiet mode to give it the absolute best performance as I did in my previous video. As you can see GPU usage is not a lot. It's using the 570 more than the 710, but the memory on the 710 is pegged at 2 gigs and it's pegged at 1.25 gigs on the 570. So they're both maxed out, which is a good sign. Maybe this means it'll be faster. We will find out. Correction on that, it's using all but 180 bytes, not megabytes, bytes. And it's using all but 288 bytes on the 710. It's using all it can get. That is impressive, I'll give it that. All right, so yep, as you can see, not too much usage happening for either card. It's actually happening like nothing except for memory on the 710. The 710 is actually at a very low GPU clock. I wonder why. And maybe it's only being used for memory and the 570 is doing all the work. I do not know. I guess we will find out if it's faster at all after these messages by me. Hello. All right, we're down to the last percent. Let's see what time we're gonna get. As soon as the encoding sequence bubble goes away, that is the time. There it is. Now take a guess. Did it improve? Did it do no difference? Did it do anything? Did it make it worse? What happened? Well. 
Let's hope you guessed right. We have a time of 12 minutes and 8 seconds. That is shaving off more than 3 minutes of render time. If you're doing a big project that could be major, because that was, that was only a 16 second clip, that could amount to minutes of increased uh, performance. Now I noticed that the clock speed for the GT710 did not go above 135 throughout that whole ordeal. So what I want to try to do is tr try swapping the uh, connections so that the 710 is the main card and the 570 is the secondary card. I'm really just doing this to see what, what happens, because I'm curious. And I will let you know of the render times after I do that. Okay, something odd happened. When I tried to swap the display cable to the 710, uh, the system cut power. Now we're using the 710. It's at 954, as it should be. And it's still running good. Let's hope it keeps running good. And I think it might just be the loose power cable. So I'm not going to remove the system from here, but trust me, that's all I did was swap the connection, the graphics cards are still in the same place as they were before. And that 570 has an awfully high temp for doing nothing. 67? Hmm, I may have to replace the thermal compound on that one there. Alright, anyways, it is time to start up the same test. And, one second. All right, we had the project back up. GT710 is the main card. And interestingly enough, the 570 is still going at full speed, even though it's not being used at all right now. Uh, whatever, I guess that'll just benefit Adobe even more than it already is by both cards running at full speed. All right. Adobe is choosing to not respond right now. Not entirely sure why. Come on, Adobe, you can do it. There we go. All right, 1080p, 30 frames. Going to the exact same spot. All right, I'm gonna hit export. The time we're gonna try to beat is 12 minutes and eight seconds. So I'll put the camera down, I'll reset the timer, and beginning in 3, 2, 1. Alright, I'll see you when this is almost done. Alright, oddly, with the 710 as the main card, uh, you can see it is the main card by the fact that it is being used. So is the uh, 570, for instance, actually. Uh, but you can see that neither one of them are using very high memory at all. I don't know how this will affect the render time. I guess we will find out together. So I'll see you at the end. Alright, we're at 95, quickly closing. And we're about to get our time. As you can see, uh, the video card usage, or at least the memory card usage, for both was very low. And I guess only using about 12% at max is kind of low for what this kind of project is. But, uh, it seems like it doesn't really matter where you have your output going, because in 12 minutes and 40 seconds, or 12.39, on the dot, uh, it was able to get the same thing done that took 15 minutes and 45 seconds. So that is still more than a three minute improvement. That is still very good. So, I guess personal preference, depending on uh, where you want your power or video cable to be. Like now we're back onto the 570. 
and the 710 goes back down to 162. Uh, I will do more testing uh, later uh, in overclocking the 710. I think that will be interesting. Given that it's got a 934 megahertz clock already, uh, that's actu actually very high considering how low end of a card it is. Like, look at the 570 there. It only goes up to 823. And that's a pretty high-end card for the time, so yeah. Uh, anyways, seems like no matter what you do, adding a second low-end card to your aging system uh, can help improve render times quite significantly. So if you found this video useful or enjoyable, please go ahead and leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, Game Boy. I will see you in the next video.